Okay, hello everyone, this is Jan Smix and we are playing Catches 2 S and as you can see uh, this this episode will be a little bit different because as you can see I got my I got my video player interface here uh, and the reason is well because last time I was recording the last campaign mission I kinda for forget to turn my microphone on so in the, so in the video there was there was the desktop sound as was the sound uh, sound from the game however i couldn't be heard <laughs> so th there wasn't my commentary for the game because my microphone microphone wasn't pl uh, wasn't plugged in so i was thinking i could potentially do if i could uh, if i could record the video again maybe but i decided i will actually I will actually try this that I will be uh, just watching the video and commenting in re retrospect and thinking it will be I th I think it will be quite interesting so let's start this video and yeah here I am probably at this point saying this is Jan Smith and blah 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 and this time will be the Baghdad missions so the Vikings see the legendary city of Baghdad sprawling in the Tigris Valley below many of their legend describe the magical beauty of uh, Sarkland but what they see takes their breath away yeah and I need to I actually need to read quite quickly because I'm not sure how I will be, be actually making After it seemingly endless trials in the searing heat our caravan crossed the final mountain pass to see the legendary city of Baghdad sprawling in the Tigris Valley below yeah so this is the Baghdad many of our legends describe the magical beauty of Sarkland but what we saw took our breath away. The city was so beautiful and magnificent that no song or tune could ever do justice to this wonder of the gods. Filled with a new hope, with the end of our struggles almost in sight, we drove our animals onward to reach the city before evening fell. But we had hardly reached the mighty gate when guards approached us and barred our way. Our reputation as fearless Vikings and daring adventurers had preceded us and the Caliph of Baghdad desired to speak with us at once to give us a mission. I could see that I would have to wait for a steaming bath and a cool goblet of wine after our long journey for a while longer. <laughs> Take care of your Viking's provisions, follow the river Tigris to the east, to Baghdad and the Caliph's palace. Okay, so I kind of like how they always... Yeah, here, here I need to turn on music actually because it's... I couldn't hear it before for some reason. However, I like how they always talk about how those cities are beautiful. Okay, Abu Del Sibon, Allah be with you, strangers. I come from the north where sinister rebels are lurking. I was able to flee, but I fear they are after me. Watch out, they'll be here soon. You should prepare yourself for a fight with them. Okay, so basically here I will be under some attacks, I mean I already played so I know and I remember even before I will be actually under under very small attacks of like 6 soldiers so that would be pretty simple. I already have uh, 3 heroes with, uh, three heroes here and yeah probably I am exploring a little bit to the north so I, so I see if if the enemies are after me, if the enemies are attacking, but yeah, right now I or only need to follow this yellow signpost, which is gonna lead me to Baghdad. But apparently, yeah, I need to build my village from beginning. I already have a farm, and I remember actually in this mission, I, I was already starting with quite a lot women and people in general, which is nice because it. It allows me to uh, expand my village actually pretty quickly. Yeah, so in this mission, there is definitely gonna be need to uh, for some uh, economics. I will need, I will need a bigger village. Although the enemies here, they could, they could potentially be defeated by only, only Kira by a method by I briefly showed you in the Battle of Byzantium mis uh, mission. It would, maybe it would be even faster. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, 
yeah now there is actually some grey and orange stripes so but don't worry I will eventually discover both of them however both of them are pretty uh, insignificant e even the yellow one actually although it's a, uh, quite a big one as I uh, discover later on oh yeah here we are building mill very important one uh, however uh, yeah later on I will discover it. I actually cannot declare war to any other tribes here but okay a wonderful fairy tale palace rose in front of us. The Kaylee was seated on a precious throne in his golden and richly adorned hall and spoke to us. I have heard much about you Nordic people and I may be able to help you. A reckless thief is causing trouble hereabouts. He is a true thorn in my side. I will reward you uh, well if you capture him. If you don't bring him to me, I'll have your head instead. Find a thief, start searching eastwards from here. <laughs> I will have your head instead. <laughs> I love those threats. Like, I'm, I could pretty easily defeat Baghdad. But anyway, yeah, I am pretty just checking out the chests. And I think I will soon return, yeah, to actually, to actually explore those uh, grey and orange stripes. <laughs> I missed the chest apparently. But yeah, mostly I am not even bothering opening them. But sometimes there is uh, good stuff inside them indeed. So yeah, I'm I am apparently starting with building building the most basic buildings like a little little bit advanced that those which are making bricks and stone in order to build barracks and stuff but yes yeah, so far we are pretty much in the beginnings although I remember I actually uh, completed this mission within like hour and half or something so this one, I actually believed uh, I managed to clear it faster than the Alexandria, although I previously mentioned I remember this Baghdad mission harder than the Alexand Alexandria one. Yeah, I can see I'm already taking birth to some children. I got some jobless carrier and yeah. So yeah, waiting for some time while my heroes will be exploring. Yeah, at this point when I have three heroes, I don't even uh, bother sending uh, sending other soldiers with me. They will be just they will be just hungry hungry next, especially in those last missions which are mainly desert. So yeah, orange drive. Who is it gonna be, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> okay, it's harbor people. Harbor people on on a river actually or lake or whatever it is. Okay, at the harbor we met an old weathered man. Oh, I see you come from far away. Well, I may be able to help you one day. So if you ever have trouble in this area, just ask for Sindbad the sailor. Uh, spoiler alert: he will he will never help me. Or at least maybe it is some secret secret event, secret easter egg which I never discovered but I doubt that however yeah I I like how they make those references for for Aladdin for example or or generally 1000 plus 1 tales or or how is it called oh yeah and Sindibat I don't I basically don't know anything about Sindibat in general there was an animated movie about him, quite a good animation, but other than that, relatively mediocre. But anyway, yeah, necessary mason shop and pottery are done by now. So that will be it. Okay, and now I'm already <laughs> now I'm finally building bakery and well, 
Yeah, because this is actually, I believe this is actually interestingly the only landlocked uh, mission in the campaign. Although in the free play, like half of the half of the missions are land landlocked. What are those? Well, the free world, the Antiochia, uh, the Wolf Hunt. Although in Wolf Hunt, I am starting by lake, so we don't have to count this one. Uh, is there anything else? Is there anything else? Hm. I don't think so, actually. Yeah, my damn memory. Anyway, I am reaching the Great Tribe, which... Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is actually a very, very rare case where actu I will actually be using uh, trading options with, uh, with those, okay. Fire so we met Saracens who gave us a warm welcome. They told us we would be welcome anytime and offered us favorable trade contracts. Yeah, which I will actually use in the future. And I was explaining here that I am I am very rarely using trade offers if it's not for the story. Yeah, here Baghdad offers me some stuff for coins, harbor people nothing, and Saracen's village, yeah, they are actually offering me uh, weapons for quite a quite a good deals. I mean, chainmail for honey. This is this is the one I will be doing because honey is unlimited resources, uh, which I can take from the beehive, beehive from uh, for infinity. So yeah, I will actually use this one to get quite a lot of chain mails, although I would I would manage to <laughs> I would manage to defeat the enemy even without them probably. But yeah. Speaking about which I'm actually not sure at which point I will actually encounter the enemy. Oh yeah, I will I will have enemies in this in, in this mission, but nothing really big like the hard Ruddy level, basically, they are relatively, relatively pathetic. Not really, not really strong enemy. Okay, and what else? What else do we have here? Yeah, I think I will be exploring more, and maybe I, I'm actually gonna find the enemy or the other tribes. There are, there's actually a few other tribes in this mission which are yet to be discovered. But yeah, most of the missions are like uh, like this that I have an enemy which I which I can either bribe to make him my friend or defeat him by military. Uh, and that's it. And if that's a campaign, there is uh, a dungeon either before or after. But uh, but that's it. So yeah, this mission is relatively creative and interesting. However, yeah, in terms of this game, actually, relatively simple. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time I saved my game. Thankfully. Yeah, I'm heading towards the Red Tribe already. And the yeah, Red Tribe in most cases are the enemies. Okay, these nomads in the desert seem to be bounty hunters. They arrows showered us upon uh, us when we dared approach them. What might their dark secret be? Okay, Red Tribes are almost always enemies. I believe pretty much the only exception was London in the England mission, and yeah, those guys are actually imprisoning Hetchy, which was uh, which was one of the one of my four heroes and one of those uh, people we've seen in the opening sequence. Hetchy is that uh, guy who didn't do anything, <laughs> didn't do absolutely anything. He just watch uh, watch Kira uh, firing an arrow. And watch Sigurd being uh, drapped on his road by the snake, and that's all. That's all there is. And yeah, those bounty hunters are actually, uh, actually demanding, 
15 large healing potions, if I'm correct. Which is a pretty crazy offer, although I remember when I was playing as a, as a kid, uh, I was mostly opting for uh, for the for the economic ways of handling the conflicts. Although now, now I believe that the military way is actually easier in most cases, and 15. 15 healing potions. I have no idea where I actually got them. If I built an actual uh, built an alchemist hut and uh, made them on my own, because actually there is no way to get them by trading, if I am not mistaken. I mean, yeah, we've got we've got gold here and mushrooms. So in the end manufacturing them on my own wouldn't actually be such a demanding task so yeah maybe yeah maybe no however yeah there will be some more tribes yeah actually two of them the white okay East of our settlement lived some Saracens who call themselves the People's Front of Baghdad. A harmless people. Okay, neutral. Not any, basically not any relevance to the uh, to the mission. How are the next one? <laughs> next one is gonna be quite interesting. You will see. Yeah. Also, it's funny how the Byzantine music is playing here in all those tribes instead of Saracens music. Probably Saracen's music sound like uh, sound like a nasty desert tribe, basically. However, those are actually uh, civilized people. People, okay. Further north was a settlement of Saracens who would abide no opposition. They opened fire on our scouts at once. So anyway, I was explaining about the music that the Saracen's music. Uh, so it's more to a desert wild tribes uh, however the cities here in the Spectre missions uh, are actually supposed to uh, to seem civilized so they the authors apparently decided that the Byzantine music will be more suitable for them after all uh, they actually indeed use the Viking music for uh, for Merabaudes and his outpost in uh, in the rebellion mission, the last one I played before this one, and also Vaki music was used for the Bl the Brigands in the Michael Guard mission, which I supposed was be uh, was because that elegant music, <laughs> like. Didn't feel exactly right for them, which I understand. But anyway, oh, yeah, now I believe I already encountered all the tribes in this mission, and yeah, those attacks which will actually be led against me, those attacks, those are actually gonna be those uh, those attacks like not from any specific tribe which is on the map, but they will actually miraculously appear at the northern edge of the map and then they will go after me I kinda like in <laughs> kinda like in stronghold games if you are familiar with stronghold which by the way is also a pretty good real-time strategy not that much different from cultures or I mean in cultures they are palisades at the best in stronghold they are actual castles or strongholds I mean they look similar but the mechanics is quite uh, quite dif quite different cultures is more about micro micro management but stronghold actually feels hmm, more complicated and more simple to play 
like both of them actually in a uh, in one but but yeah in general I actually I actually in general enjoy stronghold more I believe but yeah cultures seem to be more adventure driven right now I, I actually have I actually have a time when I enjoy more playing cultures, but maybe I could do a video at some point with uh, playing stronghold, uh, stronghold as well. Uh, basically, I decided to uh, to do a let's play about cultures too, and maybe in the future of its success successors, because I think the game is quite underra uh, underrated. And not many people know about this, which is a shame. But I can easily admit that the game has a lot of problems. For example, that everything you want to accomplish is damn slow. Okay, now we already have some civilians growing up, and yeah. Now I can see that my bread production is pretty stable. Yeah, and now it seems we are entering an era when I will be making a lot of kids. I, however, well, how, how to put it? Even in the uh, Warrior Guard mission. Which I, which I feared is gonna be very problematic, but in the end wasn't. I managed to accomplish it uh, in under two hours, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I thought that I will maybe have to create an army off screen, but I decided not to. In the end, it would be the case if I would play for like five hours. It would probably be better. Not that my videos would uh, would get a lot of use anyway, but yeah, maybe I think it. I think I will pretty much consider and uh, do some timestamps on uh, on the video uh, to actually separate the parts which are boring and I'm just waiting for the stuff to get uh, get built. And we are actually attacking or going through some uh, some dungeon. Oh yeah, we've got uh, we've got two two enemy two enemies which are quite pathetic. Like they, they are they are not really those small villages with only a few buildings. They are a little bit more refined, but still are pretty small and don't they don't have. Uh, they don't have any catapults, and yeah. By the by the way, you on you only know that uh, red one is gonna be your enemy. I believe the only exception in the game is the London in the England mission. But yeah, in even in the last mission I played the rebellion, there was this Merobodes, Frankish king. Uh, which obviously had red colors, and the point of the mission was basically either to either to uh, declare uh, or either to pay him 30 golden coins uh, to sign a peace treaty with him, or defeat him by military and. And judging by the story and the messages th there, he certainly wasn't a good guy. He was very much into slavery and stuff, so yeah. So I kicked his ass, I punished him severely. And oh yeah, there are actually only the enemies uh, fighting with lions. <laughs> and it's funny, like in those there's a desert mission, so the lions always seem to be like some natural defense for me in the early parts of those desert missions, which kinda happened even in the Antiochia mission. 
and to a lesser lesser extent even even in the Battle of Ekon. Yeah, and I'm always I'm always so stupid to, to actually uh, kill the lions and let the enemy attack me. But that uh, that will be it. But no worries. I actually have one defense tower there already, if I'm not mistaken, and that will be enough to uh, defend myself. Okay, here they come. Actually, <laughs> they, I must say their attacks are pretty unsynchronized. But even if they wouldn't, they are attacking with like. Six or seven soldiers. Six, seven soldiers max, I think, which are to totally pathetic attacks. Nothing but a useless gesture. Cool. So I can see in my past self is already starting to build a blue brewery. A very smart move indeed. Yeah, because I almost always start building uh, building brewery, and without it, especially in the uh, in the maps where, where which are mostly covered in desert, like this one, like without brewery, it will be pretty annoying to uh, to have war with someone. Okay, I'm going to capture cows. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna need them for for the ox car actually. But yeah, I can see the timer, and it actually uh, it actually goes on for uh, just 20 minutes. <laughs> and this video is actually uh, one hour 30 minutes long, or something like this. So yeah, this will probably be uh, pretty boring, so I, I will actually see how boring and how painful it is to actually watch my videos. But yeah, strategy games, strategy games are like this. Yeah, when I got spare civilians, always like, why not to assign carriers to them? Yeah, I'm always building school uh, on the edge of the village. But actually, it w it wouldn't hurt it to uh, to build it at uh, on a relevant buildings as well. But school is actually relevant to all buildings. And logistics wise there is not any uh, not any how do you call that continuous relation between them like between for example mill and bakery uh, considering in the first green mission they are already advising uh, they are already advising the player to uh, build a bakery nearby a mill but school basically you send people to school they become a baker or brewer or something and then they made their way to their uh, <sighs> Sorry, to their uh, future workspace, and that's pretty much the only communication between the school and the other buildings. So I don't think it it's super beneficial to uh, to build it uh, near any other buildings, maybe dwellings. Because by the way, uh, after all, yeah, dwellings and school are used in relation quite frequently but besides that I think it's better to actually build a school uh, on the edge of the village <laughs> to to, uh, to spare some place space actually
Cool. So yeah, there are lions already. Okay, my heroes, like, if there wouldn't be, like, uh, 20 lions, my heroes would be pretty fine. Gosh, why I'm yawning so much. Oh yeah, and here we are on the edge of the map. Pretty much the only part which we didn't d discover much uh, is the northeastern, which will be pretty relevant to the story in the future. But yeah, for now the clear goal is actually to uh, deal with those red Saracen tribe. And after that, I think the rest of it will be pretty, pretty short actually. But I haven't yet started to make my arm, make make my army. I got eleven women, and yeah, I in this mission actually I am gonna have four level five dwellings in total. And I think I am gonna make another bakery. I think so. Yeah, this carpenter is working quite slowly, isn't he? Yeah, the thing is that uh, that the. Uh, warehouse or space in the carpenter's shop is uh, is pretty full actually so he actually needs to carry the stuff away in order to uh, to get some free space inside the building uh, which actually is slowing him, slowing him down and there is even a carrier in the building. I'm not sure why why it isn't helping that much. I believe now are even allowed furniture in those dwellings, so the woman actually should uh, should be taking uh, should be taking out those uh, those for pieces of furniture. But yeah, anyway, now the sergeants are attacking me again. Are there only no? There are four soldiers. Okay, now when my heroes are out, it's not the best situation, however I can deal with them still pretty easily. Yeah, as you can see, I'm totally unconcerned about the attack. And yeah, now I'm actually considering... Uh, trading with this village. Yeah, I'm actually already setting setting the merchant. Yeah, to actually be getting chainmails for honey, which which I must say is a pretty good deal for me. <laughs> like I don't know if those uh, if those gray Saracens know that if they would <laughs> build only. One beehive, they would have unlimited resources, resources of me, uh, of honey. But yeah. Okay, now we can see that the uh, arrows from ordinary people in the building don't actually have such a big range. But that archer I had in the uh, in the defense tower was good enough to deal with the enemy. Yeah, and now with the heroes, I guess I'm just returning back because there is nothing else really to do in those uh, in that area. So 
so yeah. My village at this point, I believe, is pretty solid. So I got that one hand card at this moment, or I believe in the future, in the future I will also I'm also gonna build some ox cards, which are much more efficient in this sense. Cool, cool. I can see I'm already upgrading my dwellings. Yeah, stuff. Stuff looks pretty good at this point. Okay, merchant is already carrying the goods. And what else? Yeah, I got some homeless women. So at some point, I'm probably. <laughs> and yeah, here actually, I remember this. Here actually miscalculated. And realize I'm actually gonna need uh, I'm actually gonna need one more level five dwelling. So yeah. So I'm building it right now. Barbarically in the woods <laughs> and those bushes. Yeah, luckily there is a lot of bushes actually. So I wouldn't have problem with my people. Dying from hunger at the beginning. Yeah. Nothing to worry about. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I would. How it is at this moment? Oh yeah, merchant is actually already trading, which is great. And I don't know, but I think I should have quite a lot of civilians at this point. As a matter of fact, there is a lot of children right now. So yeah. It will soon be like 40 minutes of the gameplay, so I believe I will start making my army pretty soon. But yeah, firstly, firstly, that's a good, that's a good move actually. Building a second bakery to uh, to secure my food production because. When you underestimate food production, it is a pretty big, big, pretty big fuck up. Actually. Wow, 12, 12 civilians, that's a pretty solid. And yeah, here, here we see some civilians actually managed to get married. So they actually man managed to get picked by uh, by women who were looking for for a husband. So yeah, now right now I'm actually uh, choosing and picking them uh, to actually become something else than uh, than a soldier because soldier for some reason uh, is unable to have kids. Yeah, and now I'm giving home to the last homeless women, and yeah, I also previously <laughs> gave birth. <laughs> I, mean, I gave birth. My woman gave birth to some additional women, and now I believe I got it correctly. I didn't miscalculate, and I created uh, just the right number of women I need. So, yeah, and I believe that will be pretty much it, I think, yeah, also the carpenter, 
Yeah, Carpenter will be making ox cart soon. Okay, and by the way, the music, uh, music finally noticed that I'm I'm doing pretty well. It turned it turned to be wealthy, but it will be pretty much balancing uh, because my food production is still gonna be quite on the edge, but it will stabilize pretty soon. Yeah, now I'm wondering why I still have so few chain mails actually. But yeah, at some point I will pretty much improve the number of merchants. I think I will have like three or four of them. Uh, and apart from the first one, they will all actually have uh, ox cards. Which are much better than those hurt hand cards. So yeah, actually, also merchants probably because they are expected to uh, to travel outside the village. I believe they can't have kids either, or maybe they do, but they will be pretty problematic if they will be outside the village. Which makes also sense. The children need father figure after all. Cool builder is already building. I, I mean, carpenter is already uh, creating, building those ox carts. Which is the reason why I went for a cows actually, because I actually. I'm actually not making, uh, not making uh, leather armor or tunic in this mission. But yeah, you can see those women. How many of them is stacked in uh, by the by the bakery? Because food is a little food is a little crisis. Food is a big uh, a bit of crisis here. How are you? Now that I have two bakery, it should be quite stable. Nice. Nice, nice. Yeah, probably now at this point I will just... Yeah, I will just wait to get more merchants. And... Then, uh, then I will be just waiting for a decent um, number of chain mails, and yeah, then I will do my destructive attack. Hmm. Yeah, still I got a feeling that the merchant didn't actually fill his entire card with honey. Which I don't know why. But anyway. Okay, another wave of civilians, which I need to make manually, actually. Yeah, which is because because of Kira. <laughs> Kira, interestingly, is the uh, only woman which is also a soldier because uh, because she's a she's a hero. So if I actually use that function to choose all the women uh, Kira will be chosen as well and Kira can't have babies <laughs> although st story wise uh, spoiler alert uh, she is actually gonna have a baby with Bjarni <laughs> two games later 
but yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'm actually looking right now if I could use any uh, could use any uh, any uh, great offers from the back that, but I couldn't. Actually, you you don't see it, but I could show it just for a second here. Here we can actually see my origi uh, original face about uh, right above me. <laughs> how how I was play uh, how I was playing that. So yeah, maybe I don't know. Should I should I keep it like this until the end? <laughs> it it looks it. I mean, it looks pretty funny. It looks pretty funny. I mean, yeah. Let, let's let's keep it. We we will have a part of the game uh, game covered, but but anyway, that doesn't that doesn't much <laughs> right now. Let's let's keep it just because it is it is a pretty funny indeed. Oopsie, sorry. And yeah, now I am apparently checking how strong my opponent opponents are here. And yeah, the purple uh, purple city is obviously a bit weaker than the red one. However, the purple one I don't have to defeat them story wise, but eventually I will defeat all of them. Or I, I I will actually defeat the red one the red one first. Because story-wise, it is a priority. However, there is gonna be an interesting thing happening, which you will see later on. And now the music actually interestingly turned to normal or neutral or how should I call that? Probably because I was. I was giving birth. <laughs> my woman was giving birth to a lot of a lot of people, and it was using up a lot of food actually. And when a, when a food is uh, is being used up a lot, it apparently uh, it apparently turns the mood of my people down. So the music changes. Yeah, now there's actually another attack, and yeah, I don't even need to activate my defense towers because I got my crew of archers here. Yeah, we defeated the enemies quite easily. Wow, and then the music actually turned to dangerous now, just because of this one attack. Actually, yeah, of course, uh, of course, missions have a different uh, music set, but some of them, I mean, of, of course, some music sets are being being used for uh, for mul multiple missions. Or this is, I believe, the only music, uh, the on the only mission which is using this music set, but. In, in the future games, there there will be more of them. There will be more of them. I believe there is actually one more one more mission in Cultures 2, which is using this music set, which I believe is uh, is in the multiplayer mission, and that's gonna be a badass one. That's gonna be a badass one. I think I'm gonna try it in the future before playing the final campaign mission because there are actually not any more free play mi free play missions to try out. Anyway, what I'm waiting for? Oh yeah, probably I'm waiting. For for people to grow up, grow up, and yeah, here I got another crew of soldiers, and still wondering why I don't have as many chainmails as I would like to have. 
Yeah, look at my face, how, how concerned it is. <laughs> I think I will have like how many like 40 or 40 soldiers or something like that. However, I will actually yeah, I will actually uh, give chain mails to all of them. Oh nice. Nice. There is only 17 of them in that ox cart. Chain mails are after the blade armors the best armors in the game action. Anyway. Okay, twenty seven soldiers already. That is quite solid. Maybe if I was attack them now I I might have a chance. Or maybe with a lar with a big losses. I don't know. But with 40, 40 soldiers, especially uh, especially with chain mails, it's much more solid. Oh yeah, I will actually interestingly be quite struggling uh, with the attack actually. So yeah, probably at some point maybe I was uh, I was considering attacking the purple uh, the purple uh, village first because maybe something interesting will happen. <laughs> well, you, you you will see. I won't be spoiling this because it is very interesting. Okay, the music changed to wealthy again. Yeah, and at this point, I actually, yeah, I actually have a lot of soldiers. And wow, look at those chain chain mails. Oh, it's so beautiful, <laughs> so beautiful. Oh yeah, I am giving them long bows also. Yeah, and I believe now after they are gonna get those channel mails, I will actually be good to, good to attack. <laughs> yeah, probably now I decided to uh, to give an upgrade to the uh, to the pottery <laughs> uh, to be able to make uh, make crockery, which will. Which would ease up the food production quite a lot. I'm not sure how exactly they work, but probably they can. They can probably spare food a lot. But as I said, not not exactly sure how they work. Cool, I see there are still few soldiers who don't have any armor, so I'm probably at this point waiting for uh, for one more merchant guy to return with the plate armors. And they are definitely on their way now, because I can see only only one ox cart is uh, in the village at this point. Yeah, he's already coming only with nine of them actually. Which is pretty pretty strange. And maybe te te technically those those merchant guys probably work pretty bad, which is I would say a large uh, large negative aspect of, of this game. It's for example when they are at that friendly village and are committing a trade 
and they are carrying the goods from their warehouse to the ox carts. Maybe they can get hungry along the way or tired, and they are they are gonna put it on the ground, then have some food or sleep, and they are actually not returning with uh, with that food. I think if I would be doing this game, I actually, I actually wouldn't would wouldn't mind those tra those trade trades. I mean mer merchants and just doing trades by clicking. For God's sake, maybe those merchants could could still be used for internal trades, but. You get the point. Okay, now I'm actually already giving meat to the soldiers, which means I'm getting ready for the attack. Oh, and now they are actually attacking me. <laughs> so I need to pause the game. Okay, I think they are not even gonna... Uh, they are not even gonna manage to tear this uh, tower down. Yeah, thanks to my builders, actually, we are actually repairing it along. Along. Which is yeah, which which is which is good. I recall other <laughs> real-time strategy game uh, where the builders can actually repair the buildings while they are being attacked. It's pretty funny though. Light, uh, like uh, Night Shift for example. Night Shift also is pretty good real-time strategy. Uh, although a pretty, sim a pretty simple one. Where this is possible when from white one side the enemy is attacking my my gate, while from the other side the builders are uh, actually already repairing it. So yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, probably at this point I am creating a spare wave of civilians, but I'm not really gonna need it. So there was enough, yeah. <laughs> there was enough uh, village building. Now we can already uh, get into action. And now I, I see. I actually forgot to uh, forgot to reallow uh, crockery in one of the dwellings. But anyway. Yeah, by the way, I actually didn't mention the historical context of this mission yet. Uh, Baghdad is actually in... Baghdad is, is uh, the capital of today's Iraq, I believe. Or Iran. I think it's Iraq. But anyway, you, you got the point more or less where we are. And also, it's pretty annoying to attack an enemy which is, uh, which is the entire map away. And yeah, here's the guy, the informer. There are bounty hunters who would be quite happy to catch a thief before you. The informer told us. If you have no more clues, I would suggest you go east. There is a bounty hunter's base. They will have found your thieves' trail already. Go to the east. Yeah, there is an informer. Story-wise, story-wise, I need to, I need to get a thief, which is the, which is the Hatchy. However, that he was already captured by those, or by those red guys. By those, how they are called, hunters, bounty hunters. Yeah. So 
so yeah. And because my diplomacy is war, <laughs> you will see what's gonna happen, of course. So yeah, surprisingly, hmm, one of the soldiers became so hungry that half of his HP is gone. Okay, anyway. You dare to attack us, the bounty hunter shouted. You don't set a chance against us. Uh, once we have a right to the Caliph's reward for handing over the prisoner. <laughs> like, di did they even see what is attacking them? <laughs> They're freaking, freaking stupid. Okay, it was a little bit glitch fast because when there is a large pack of soldiers, they they tend to lag actually. And yeah, the, this tribe will actually be a bit difficult to conquer, mainly because those soldiers have those uh, maybe because they have those gates, but. In fact, they are just slowing it down, just just annoying, and it it just it just doesn't allow to it just, it just doesn't allow me to lure the soldiers out of the village effectively. But otherwise, they are they are just annoying. Nothing else, really. And yeah, at, at this point I uh, I was just thinking, fuck this shit, let's attack aggressively. <laughs> yeah, I will actually have here quite a bigger loses than I, I expected. I mean losses. Yeah, because there is actually a lot of ordinary people of the village which will be stacked in those defense towers. thus giving the hours a lot of additional defense. But my archers are dealing with them pretty nicely. <laughs> Destroying enemy which is always so satisfying. But yeah, those defense towers, because they do have a lot of ordinary people, are indeed quite annoying. <laughs> yeah, right now I'm just destroying the gate, so my soldiers will are gonna have it more comfortable navigating around. Okay, there, are, there is still at least four defense towers to go. Yeah, they, and, and they still have a lot of archers. Cool. Yeah, right, right now they are also quite out of people, or, or maybe not. I can see there's a lot of powers. Yeah, there was a lot of people stacked inside. Huh. I don't think I think I get any message when uh, when defeating them. And by the way, I don't exact I don't exactly know why that gate is purple, but whatever. Yeah, and that that's it. That's it for uh, for the bounty hunters. And now I'm actually gonna free hatch it. Cool. 
Okay, deep in the camp of the bounty hunters we met a prisoner, his name was Hatchy, and contrary to all expectations he seemed to be a clever and honorable man. And at the campfire we told him our story and he nodded his head. He murmured that our finding his must have been a kismet, fate, and fell into pensive silence. The next morning the messengers of the Caliph arrived, he had heard of Hatchy's rescue. And now he had a task for him. Far in the northeast there was a mysterious valley nobody had ever returned from alive. There were rumors that at the end of this valley stood an enchanted desert temple, where immeasurable wealth and enchanted treasures were to be found. Only Hatchi and Master Sief would be able to enter there. It was our task to help him. Find the mysterious desert temple in the northeast with Hatchi. Hmm. Ah, Jesus! Sorry for those yawning. For some reason, I need to yawn quite a lot. Yeah, now Hatchi joined my ranks, and now see what I'm actually gonna do. Yeah, also I saw some of the soldiers still have, still got some meat left. Oh yeah, save the game, of course, very important. Very important. And also, you see, there, there is a reason why I'm feeding those soldiers right now. And the reason will be obviously that I'm gonna attack that other tribe. And yeah, I didn't even notice I am uh, I am at the attack here at this village. However, my soldiers managed to take take care of it without me interfering. Yeah, that's such a good village. Okay, lions? Lions are there? Yeah, probably. Maybe even a soldier wouldn't have those uh, chain mails. Maybe he would actually die. <laughs> yeah, and here they actually are some annoying mountains. Which will actually. We'll actually take a look into this area later on. However, right now, yeah, right now I only need to get into this village. Or town, settlement, whatever it is, how am I supposed to call it? So, yeah. There is interestingly a yellow signpost at a place like this. <laughs> what will we be doing here? Anyway, yeah, the purple tribe is evidently much smaller, have much fewer soldiers and people in general. So it won't be hard to take it, take it down. Okay, easy, right? <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, actually, interestingly, they didn't actually stack people, or they didn't seem to activate those two defense towers. Well, that other one seems to be pretty stacked with people, which is pretty, pretty interesting. But whatever. Mostly when I'm attacking the enemy, they are activating the towers which are nearby me, actually. Okay, okay, but yeah, now they activated this one, actually. But yeah, it still looks the other two are more activated. And yeah, now those soldiers of mine are annoyingly finding uh, other way to go around. Yeah, of course soldiers here can be pretty stupid. Hmm. 
the artificial intelligence is uh, indeed uh, pretty much a downplay of this game. <laughs> I, ju I just saw that uh, Antikar has no commander, but at this point I don't care. Oh, they have a pretty nice barracks. Like those spikes, those golden spikes, it almost looks like some orcish design. Interestingly, I actually read a short interview with the uh, designer of those buildings in the game, and he did quite a good research about the architecture, and he wanted to com uh, combine it with the actual realistic one, and the uh, fantasy style. And yeah, I think they look uh, pretty impressive. So, what else is there? What else? Yeah, sometimes annoying people are running away. But yeah, that's it for them. And you see, you see that, you see that that uh, actually those uh, yeah, Thief is no longer in the game, and so someone changed the diplomacy stand against me. And so who's gonna be? And yeah, bounty hunters changed their diplomacy status. New attitude neutral. So actually, it, it seems that when I defeat those purple purple Saracens, then the uh, then the bounty hunters actually change their stance towards me from hostile to neutral, which is pretty interesting. I don't know how how would it be explained story wise actually. Like that those thieves would be actually my and the bounty hunters common enemies. But if the if they are bounty hunters it it will actually make sense for them if 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 they if they would like me if I if I would kill to kill them <laughs> because they aren't getting money over them. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, here I apparently try to find out if there isn't any uh, any story-wise thing hinting me, hinting me why this could happen? However, yeah. Apparently, I think it is a cool little detail. Ooh. Saving my game, obviously, is very needed. And yeah. Now I'll be actually getting my heroes, I think, and finish this mission off. I don't even know why I am looking inside those chests. Because right now the only thing I need to finish in this, in this mission is to clear the dungeon. And yeah, my heroes are already coming. <laughs> I was, I would like to see what I'm actually explaining right now with this this gesture. But yeah, even even though. Even though those videos are actually not getting uh, many views, I'm actually really glad that I am recording them and I can look at them in retros retrospect. That's, that's actually really awesome. Okay, so cool. Cool. I think I can just uh, go to the dungeon now, which I'm, which I don't exactly know where it is. 
but I decide a good strategy would be simply to follow the signposts or maybe not. No, I'm, I think it's actually yeah, in this valley actually. Isn't it? No, not yet. So yeah, probably... Yeah, probably I just need to be keep looking. But I, I'm gonna find it pretty soon. There is already just like a 15 minutes left. Oh yeah, soldiers are already in, in the village. And yeah, and now, yeah, the sirens are those. And th that's cool over there. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Our men were on their way through a deep mountain ravine when they heard an enchanting melody. The si singing was so bewitching that they were unable to proceed with their work, nor did they seem to possess a will of their own. They were spellbounded by the legendary sirens. Free your men from this spell. The sirens cannot do any harm to Kira, but your men are still caught in their spell. Only the legendary Hall of Galamedis can silence the sirens for a certain time. But since the horn is in the ravine beyond the sirens, only a woman can find it, and sh as she can resist the sirens and stand up to the lions of the desert. Have Kira see the horn of the Gal of Galamedis. So there you have it, my friends. There you have it. I, I like how this this sand is actually waving. Yeah, and indeed I cannot control any of those uh, of those heroes. And if I would walk walk there with all those forty soldiers I have, they would actually all be caught in the spell. Okay. No sooner had Kira found the horn and blown it than it burned burst into countless pieces, <laughs> but at the same moment it had sounded the sirens flew away, screaming. The vikings were in full possession of their faculties again. Kira had managed to free the man from the evil spell. The way into the valley was free now, but for how long? I couldn't manage to read it, but never mind, you can, uh, you can easily pause it. And yeah, now there will be a fight with few lions. Luckily, I didn't have to encounter any lions just with Kira on her own. She could defeat them easily, but it would take some annoying time. Okay, some lions are actually over over there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's pretty lucky that I didn't run into them with Kira. Yeah, they all ganged up on Bjarne, which was a little bit dangerous to him, but yeah, he still have uh, more than half of his HP. <laughs> yeah, and this lion is actually running away, and I say just so, fuck it, let him leave. <laughs> yes, he's running away. Away so much. Okay, okay, there, there, there is still quite a lot of lions. And yeah, because they, they mostly gang up on the first enemy they that attacks them first, which mostly happens to be the archer. So it's pretty logical they gang up on uh, on Kira and uh, Kira, since she's an archer, uh, she has a tendency to get a distance and the uh, lions have tendency to, cha to, cha uh, to chase her and so uh, Bjarni, Sigurd and Hechi can catch, uh, catch up them, so that's annoying. Anyway, there it was, right ahead, the mysterious desert temple. The old walls were terrifying to look at. No sound could be heard. There was no living soul near or far in the enchanted valley. 
When we four, Sigurd, Kiara and Hatchif and myself stood together in front of the dark entrance, we decided to descend into the dark walls of, on our own. Thanks to Hatchi, we overcame the hidden lock at the massive portal, which we could, uh, which would never have been able to pass without him. Then we proceeded with a, into the sinister darkness, where a strange hissing sound could be heard. Yeah, so I need Hatchi to to uh, unlock it. Okay, the Oracle. We proceeded deeper and deeper into the darkness of the treasure temple until Hatchi found an old torch and lit it. Then, at the bottom of the stairs, we found an old weather inscription, which was translated by our native friend. We were now in the innermost part of the temple, which was guarded by ancient temple guards. We found only uh, we would only prevail if we presented ourselves to the oracle. Only a man who was as clever as he was brave would win the final prize. Oh, snake people, who's there? A voice thundered, seeming to come from the rocks themselves. Unworthy intruders, I am the oracle of the desert temple. Whoever would pass me must first answer seven questions and defeat my serpent guards. There are three answers to every question, answering me by activating the corresponding switch. Try to remember the symbols well. I will explain this only once. <laughs> yes, yeah, so on this game, this is the game. It's pretty funny. This is switch A. This is switch B, and this is switch C. So yeah, A, B, C. First question: Which is your favorite color? <laughs> I'm actually not sure what this is supposed to be, but yeah, probably since my village is always blue, I am probably supposed to say blue. Or maybe every can every answer he he will be correct. I I don't really know. I don't really know. But yeah. Yeah, just press the A switch. Yeah, correct. The oracle is continuing your answer. One of the guard disappears. So yeah, every every time I answer correctly, one of the snake guards disappears. So that was lucky. Yeah, later on I can actually try what would happen if I uh, if I answer something else. Anyway, second question: What did you have here? A pound of feathers of a pound of iron. <laughs> yeah, as a kid I was super proud. I I figured this out, like. No idea, maybe they're both the, both the same. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's still a pound of something. And since pound is the measure of, uh, of weight, then when it's pound of something, it's still the same. Anyway, third question. Uh, the king of France is poorer than the emperor of Byzantium. The caliph of Baghdad is richer than the king of France. The emperor of Byzantium is ri as rich as the caliph of Baghdad. Who is the poorest? Yeah, the king, the king of France is the is the poorest. <laughs> Maybe in the reality as well. Okay, Ziggur might must be pretty offended by now. Okay, anyway, for a question, <laughs> the cow is farther than the smith. The smith is slower than the farmer. The farmer is slower. Uh, no, the scout is slower than the farmer, who is the fastest. <laughs> yeah, actually, I I won't be thinking about this. I will I will let my past self to uh, to take care of it. Yeah, I could write stuff down on the on the paper, <laughs> but yeah, we we were actually. Uh, we were actually uh, learning how to get uh, riddles like this on a high, on my in my high school. Yeah, we had that logic seminar because of acceptance tests for university. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. Okay, the farmer is the correct one, right? Yeah. Farmer, of 
Okay, fifth question. Your headquarters are in a foreign country where uh, where all windows point to the north. Where are you? Yeah, on, on the on the north port, obvious. North, no, south pole actually, south pole. <laughs> Yeah, pretty tricky. I actually uh, remember like a long time, like two years ago, I actually got this riddle uh, without knowing the without knowing the op options actually. Sixth question, what, what is this? The more you put in it, the smaller it becomes. The more you take away from it, the bigger it becomes. Okay, mug of meat, bjarn is socks or a hole in the ground. <laughs> Okay, Bjarni sucks is a pretty good answer. <laughs> okay, correct. The Oracle's content, yeah, yeah. Okay, seventh question. If Bjarni's son is my father's son, who am I? <laughs> I am Bjarni's... Uh, Bjarni's son, right? <laughs> Stuff like this make my head hurt. Yeah, everything correct. I didn't have to fight fight a single snake. <laughs> serpent Serpent Gahar has died. Okay. Nice. And yeah, though, there are still those. And yeah, hmm, yeah, then there are with some annoying lions as well. Oh, and I even got soldiers! So nice. Oh, I, I, I mean, look look at this gold. It's pity that it's totally useless to me. <laughs> Another pack of lions inside a chest. Okay, more lions. It's actually one of the on, one of only four missions in Culture 2 which have uh, serpent guards. I mean serpent people. In the future, Culture's game there is some more of them actually. Anyway, yeah, here I struggled a bit uh, on what am I supposed to do. But yeah, I'm I'm obviously supposed to go to that magical magical chest. Just to go there. Yup, that's it. Mission successful. With courage and cleverness, we overcame the dreadful keepers of the gate and proceeded into the innermost regions of the enchanted desert temple. In a little room, we found an ancient chest. Its creaking lid opened slowly. When we carefully looked into it, we held our breath. There were no miracles things in it, no enchanted treasures. On the bottom of the chest, uh, lay the last of the three pieces of the map we had searched half of the world for. Uh, actually, just half of the, of the, of the Europe, anyway. Uh, it was more valuable to us than any precious objects. Uh, topic. Our joy was great when we finally held it in our hands. However, the Caliph would not be at all amused if we returned with empty hands. I mean, did, did you see all that gold? Anyway. Therefore, we decided to take the piece of the map and leave the country as fast as possible. <laughs> That's pretty clever. <laughs> okay, so my past self. Okay, had she offered help to us? Well, I would hope for that. Okay, and that's it. That's it. Took a great deal of cunning to get past the guards and reach the heavily guarded desert temple. Our allies did well.
especially our new friend, Hachi. As I watched him fight, I realized that only he could be the third hero I had seen in my vision. Now that we have the last piece of the map, and all the heroes of my vision had been united, we departed to fulfill the prophecy. We placed the pieces of the map together and saw the path that would lead us to Figured Wall, where our fellowship of four would face the final challenge. The Spirit King of Tula is in my sword. But yeah, anyway, typically I'm just exploring the map. I left some lions there apparently. I will spare their life. Yeah, and besides that there's pretty much nothing but desert. Okay, some nice oasis in the southwestern area. That's around it. Okay. Okay. So you see. Yeah, I think we can wrap this uh, wrap this up. Yeah, and the last one is Wigrid Wall. And yeah, there's no more free play missions, but I think I will maybe I will actually try one of those multiplayer training ones. But yeah, what is my past self doing? Okay, anyway, anyway, I think I'm gonna end this pretty soon. So guys, thank you for watching, see you next time, and have a nice day.